I'm backing up my truck, I'm gonna hook it up, loading up my boat with all my gear. I've been working hard all week, trying to make ends meet, spending time wishing I was fishing. Well, Terry Wickstrom wants to take you fishing. Gather up your gear and come along. Well, Terry Wickstrom wants to take you fishing. This is Terry Wickstrom. Join Karen Collum, Greg Collagio, and me as we take you to some of our favorite fishing spots from Colorado to Minnesota, the Arctic Circle to Central America and beyond. As we revisit episodes of Mountain States Fishing and Angling Adventures Television on the best of fishing with Terry Wickstrom. Hey, today we're going to do something a little different. We're out on the shores of Doughty Reservoir. Now, we've ice fished here before you've seen us, Doughty Lake up in the Red Feathers area. But today isn't going to be about the fishing. We constantly get people telling us when we talk about electronics for fishing that they kind of understand, but they don't really. So we're going to take you out on the ice and use, show you the techniques for using electronics for fishing and how you use them to find fish, locate fish, locate positions, and go back to those positions with different types of electronics. Now. Hopefully we're going to catch some fish too because we want to do that too. And this technique could work in a lot of places. The reason we chose Dowdy Reservoir to do this is because it's easy access to get in with the cameras and we had a good controlled situation to, uh, to show you this setup. But this doesn't have to be used in a place like Dowdy. A couple of the things I'm going to be using today are my, my, my Lowrance M68. This is a depth finder and a GPS. We're going to be both fishing with this and using it to both go to and save locations. And I have my Lowrance uh, H2 Color a handheld GPS that I'm also going to be using. Now uh, let me explain a little bit how we would use these in any situation then we'll get out in the ice and show you firsthand a little bit about how to do it. Uh, I have a, a waypoint saved and as you can see on the screen right here it says Dowdy Ice 1 and it shows my current position I'm up in the parking lot here. Now I could use just this I wouldn't need this I have both so I'm going to take, a I'm going to take the time to go through both. Now I can turn this one on and while it's coming up I'll tell you a little bit. We're going to go down to the shore, but that waypoint I saved there, we fished out here previously, and there's actually a rock right there that the fish are kind of drawn to. So I know I could go in this flat and catch a lot of fish. Dowdy's an easy lake to do that, but I also know there's a couple spots out here that are better than others, so I've marked them as waypoints so I can go right back to them. We were fishing out here one time. We were maybe 50 feet apart from another person. I was catching fish and he wasn't. Put the underwater camera down, so I was right by a rock, so we saved that as a waypoint. Another thing we could have done, I could have been out here with my handheld during the summer or the, the GPS on my boat. My large boat has Lowrance GPS units, uh, mapping units on it. I also have the handheld. Now you don't need all of this, but you have one or two of these. In fact, you could get by with just this and I'll tell you about that in a minute. But the handheld, really nice because I use this, uh, I'm out in somebody else's boat or I'm out in my small green boat that doesn't have a GPS. I can mark some waypoints. I can actually load them in from a map. You can get a map, both of my ones on my boat and this one, I can load very detailed maps of an area and a chip goes in here and saves those and I can access those while I'm out using it. They even have lake maps you can download, uh, like Blue Mesa is a great example in Colorado where I could put in the Blue Mesa lake map and have all the contour lines of the map and find the humps and points right on here. So that's really good for the handheld. When I go out on the ice, I'm going to use the handheld. I also have Dowdy Ice 1, same position, low saved on both of these. I just copied it into this one. And I, I'm going to uh, use this handheld to take me to my position. Now I could use this. I could just set this on my sled and watch it as I walked. But I want to kind of demonstrate both units. But I guess what I'm getting to, GPS has made it so easy to remember and go to locations. Uh, and these units from uh, Lowrance are so good. So we're going to go out there and instead of you're always hearing me about be mobile and be ready to move and drill lots of holes. Well, that's good. But if you can go to a good spot right away, then you don't have to do so much moving. You spend more time fishing. Now, a lake like Dowdy is not quite so bad to do that. But maybe a lake, uh, a further in lake or a big lake like Blue Mesa, you want to get to those spots, whether you're on foot or snowmobile. And these units are going to help you do that. Another thing, another thing you could... Uh, you could do on, on this one is I could take this in my little green boat that doesn't have a GPS unit in it. I could set this right on the bench next to me, drive around Dowdy and save waypoints on my ice fishing unit and have them all mapped out. Do my scouting in open water before 
the lake freezes, come out, do your scouting, and if you have a big boat like mine with the other GPS, save some waypoints, save some places you want to try to ice fish, and you can use these units to go right to them. We're going to get out on the ice, we're going to use these to locate our spot, then we're going to teach you a little bit how to fish with electronics, how you watch the lure, how you watch the fish. So we're going to get the huts unloaded, get down to the shore, and join me as we head out on the lake. Okay, we're down on the lake, got my GPS here, spot's right out here. Now this lake is pretty easy to find, there's people out here, and we're using this lake as a demonstration, but this was a bigger lake. I could have it either on navigation screen or I could have it on map screen like you saw earlier. So I'm going to put it right now, I've got it on navigation screen, and it tells me, and I'm going to start walking, and the arrow is going to point the direction I have to go and how far I have to go to get there, or I could put it on map screen and just walk towards it and watch my trail as I go. I'm going to walk out, we're going to find that spot and get set up. And what you're looking at here is the depth finder on my Lowrance unit set up full screen. We're going to show you the other screens too. We drilled a hole, popped up the shed. We're at our spot on our GPS. Now we're not seeing any fish. What you're seeing right here, and I'll put, let me put my bait on here, and then I'm going to point a couple things out to you. And then I'm going to put this down the hole and have you watch how neat this is to fish with. Now, if you look right here, the screen is showing us the depth. It says 16.6 feet, 0.7, and it's actually about a foot deeper than that because I have the transducer down in the hole, as you'll see, hanging on this cord, and that's going into the water. So it's actually, if you went from the top of the ice, it's about 18 feet deep here. Got that down in the hole. One of the things I did with the Lawrence unit, it comes with a metal bar that goes in here that you hook to. I got rid of that little metal bar myself, and I just... Uh, put the cord right in this little arm and hang it down the hole then it hangs straight down on the cord down into the hole now what I'm gonna do and what you're what you're seeing here is this is the top that's a little surface clutter now there are adjustments you can go in and get rid of that but that's just surface clutter and reflection on the ice this is our bottom right here these little tiny lines in here got the sensitivity turned up where it's picking up a little bit of interference that's all that is and you'll pick some of that up and you'll you, you can get rid of that but then you might not see the fish I have a tiny little lure here, it's against worm. I have a tiny piece of food source worm that I broke off on there. I'm gonna go down the hole with this. Now when I start down the hole, you're gonna see my lure as it goes down here, and you watch as we let this down the hole now. Okay, and we'll get it down here a little bit and you'll start to see it. Okay, you see that line coming down right there? That's my lure. Now if I stop letting it down, it's just gonna be a straight line across there. That's all it is, right there. And if I go up and down with it, you'll see it go up and down. See it go down, back up, down. That's my lure. Now, what I'm looking for, fish are going to look very similar to that. They're going to be a straight line down there. We're going to take that lure down to bottom because that's where I think the fish are. Now I know exactly where my lure is at all times. So you see it's going down here. Now it's right down to here. It's just a couple feet off the bottom. If I stop there, it'll be a straight line again. And this is using a tip... Uh, uh, fl uh, regular LCD type screen. This is TFT, so it's made for cold weather. And now we're down in the bottom. You know, I said in the open, we're coming out here. We're at Dowdy Reservoir, and there's a lot of people out here fishing. Pretty large flat area that tapers down. We're in about, you know, 16, 18 feet of water. And uh, we have an advantage. I came out here this summer and marked some spots using my Lowrance GPS in my boat. I know there's some rocks right in the area. We're within five to 10 feet of some rocks that really hold fish. Now we don't have to be right on them because our jigging will bring them over to us. So instead of having to come out here, drill holes and blindly look around, we did some scouting in the open water, saved those GPS points like we showed you, used our handheld GPS, we could have used our M68 use our handheld GPS to walk in a very close proximity to those points, drill our holes and start. So we're starting out immediately with an advantage over everybody else because we know something about the bottom structure because we scouted it out during open water. Now, if I hadn't had a chance to scout this out and I didn't have a GPS point I wanted to fish, I'd probably have drilled several holes, used my electronics to check depth and look for fish. And what I'll do is I'll put the, drill five or six holes across different depths, put my Lorance unit in the hole, jig it with a spoon. I may not catch a fish, but what'll happen, it, it, they'll, they'll usually come in and look at the aggressive spoon, jigging of that spoon, and I'll know if there's fish there. If I don't see anything come in, I'll move, drill some more holes until I at least see fish. 
Once I find fish, see them on my electronics, I can watch how they respond to the presentation. And I can change it to catch them. Just like that, I'm watching. A fish came in here. Here he is, he's right in there. And like I said, we've got such an advantage because we know we're in a fish holding area before we started out. And there he is, fish down there. So I'm watching him. Just missed him. Now he swam away. So I'll change my presentation. Got him. Oh, I, yeah, I got him. Jigged aggressively. Got him in. It's just a little one, but a good way to get started today. All right, that's going to kick us off, and we're going to go on a roll. I'll tell you what, little fish, but kind of wanted to show you what we were doing before we gave you the, the lesson in electronics. This is really a little one. Now, we expect to catch a few bigger than this, but we don't care. We're just out here having fun. Little rainbow, we'll get him back in the hole. There's another fish down there. Right here on the screen, I'm going to go down. It's my lure going down. Now I'm going to stop. He's actually gone, that fish, because otherwise you'd still see him here. But hopefully he's close enough where he'll see this lure, come back in and take a look at it. And that's what we're counting on. See my jig? I'm jigging it pretty aggressively right now, because I know there's a fish in the area. And I'm trying to wait to get him back in the screen. Then I'll change my presentation when he's on the screen. This up and down, up and down, that's me aggressively moving the jig trying to get him to come back on the screen. Okay, now you see something? I've lifted my lure up. You see all those other lines in there? There's a fish, he's in there. There's all that other line, there's a fish and he just hit my lure. See that line, there it's coming up to my lure. You see that line that came up right here? It came up, he's right at my lure. I don't know whether we can catch him or not. He bit once, little jig with a food source on it. Now he's going back down. See him leaving it? He left my lure. But that line right here, coming up, that was that fish. They went back down, no, he came back up. He's right by the lure. There he is, there, just like that. I tell you what, it's just, it's amazing. Now, sometimes when you lift above him a little, this is a little bigger one again. I'm gonna pull my transducer out of the hole. Oops. There we go. Oops, get him out. Now, with bigger fish, I'm not, I'm a little more careful when I do the landing and things. But I know, we're only using four pound tests, but these are small fish. See, they're just nice rainbows. There's some browns in here too. Get him back in the hole. You know, whether I'm fishing a river in Colorado or the flats off the Florida Keys, one of my most important accessories are my Habervision polarized sunglasses. Not only do they allow me to see into the water, see the fish, but they protect my eyes from the intense UV. Habervision makes great high-end polarized sunglasses for men and women, and you can avoid the typical retail markup for high-end glasses by logging on to Habervision.com and using the member code FISHTECH. You know, in today's modern huts, getting out of the wind, you've got backlighting on these electronics to use them. Uh, it almost becomes like sitting in your living room watching a video game. It gets to be so much fun. Now we're out on Dowdy Reservoir and we don't expect to catch a lot of big fish or even, a, we're not even trying to catch a lot of fish, but it's an easy lake to come to to demonstrate uh, the use of electronics and shelters and the modern equipment we have. There's a fish down there. Let's see what we can do. Jig them up, see what happens. But Dowdy, you know, even if you don't have electronics, lakes like this, you can come up you know, and get started ice fishing. And Dowdy's one of those lakes that give you an opportunity to come up and learn about it. But as you progress and get into it, if you really want to get serious and you want to catch fish, the use of electronics, uh, like my Lowrance unit, this M68, will at least double, if not triple, the number of fish you'll catch because you're going to know when to make your presentation. When is there a fish present? Now, if we get several fish, we've had some fish come in and sniff at it and go away that we haven't been able to get. We've had a few bites, we've stayed with it. If that keeps up, that's going to tell us that maybe we need to change our presentation. If we didn't have electronics, we wouldn't even know those fish were there. So this gives us so much information. Uh, it's kind of like a mood indicator for the fish. We watch them. Oh, got him. Got him. There we go. There we go. He came in, swam in on the electronics. Some come in on the electronics. And we'll get this one back down, just a little rainbow. Just exactly what we expected to catch here. We're gonna, we're gonna get him on hook and get him back down the hole. And uh, we're not fishing for giant fish here. That's exactly what we're expecting to catch here. We'll get him back down in the hole, let him swim away. And what happened with that fish, 
and there's another one down there sometimes what happens now I know there's another fish down there because I'm using artificials instead of live bait all I have to do is make a minor adjustment to my jig get it back down there and I'm fishing again and I know there's another fish down there so I can go right after it you know what we're doing is it's so exciting because I landed that fish and because my electronics were still down the hole I could see that another fish had swam in there and he's down there right now and I'm watching him and I was talking about this being a mood indicator it gets almost like playing a video game though it's fun too when the fish are biting but it's so much fun you know there's another fish down there he's down there I can tease him I can see him looking at my lure I mean I don't know if he's looking at it but he's right there right at the depth of my lure is at right under right under me here now, I'm using just artificial baits here I have the food source lures on a Dave Gens worm we have no bait with us today at all and see that thicker line I think there's still a fish I'm lift it up he's there see him and there he comes up see when I lifted my lure oh there's two fish down there one down on the bottom one here one here and my lure see if I can get one to go there he is there we go another one oh yeah I still got him still got him this one's pulling a little harder so I'm gonna take the transducer out of the hole on this one and get it up here that's another thing about not having that stick on her. Little bigger fish, little bigger fish, not a big fish, but exactly what we're expecting to catch here. Just exactly what we're expecting to catch. So, you see, we'll get the hook out of them. Now, that one destroyed my soft plastic bait, so I'm going to have to get another, another little grub on here. But that'll give me a good chance to talk to you folks. All right? Go just another rainbow. Now, we can keep four of these, I believe, here and take them home and eat them, but I don't really want any today. Here we go. Give you, give you a better look at him. Nice little rainbows. We'll get him back in the hole, let him swim away. Get my towel out here, and wipe my hands off. And then I wanna, you know what, I'm not even gonna, I'm with my transducer back down so I see if any fish come. And then I'm gonna talk to you for a minute because the bites are taking off here. And you know, what I was saying, I was able to change my presentation there because I'm using electronics. If I didn't have electronics, I wouldn't even know when fish were there. And that first fish that came in, after I caught that small one, I went down there and I jigged real aggressively. And I saw him come up by the lure and then he swam away, but he wouldn't bite. So I jigged aggressively and another one came in and then I stopped and really subtly teased and made a less aggressive presentation. Now, if I didn't have electronics, I would have no idea that that other fish responded negatively to that first presentation and then able to change it and catch that second fish. In the same token, if fish are down there and I keep changing my presentation and they won't bite, I know maybe it's time to try a different lure, a different bait. This is all information you don't have without electronics. So you just, it gives you so much information. The other side of it is if I fish here for a half hour, an hour, and I see no fish at all, and I use some aggressive presentations, and they don't even come in and look. Oh, there's another fish down there. I got to get baited up. But if they don't even come in and look, I don't know that there's any fish there. I got to go move. The last one I had to go to that subtle presentation to get them to bite. So I'm going to use a real subtle presentation here. But what I was saying, and we'll probably miss this because I want to finish this point. But what I'm saying is if, if I had fished here for a half hour, 45 minutes and not seen any fish, or I probably wouldn't have fished here that long, but say I fished a half hour, I changed to a real aggressive presentation. Sometimes I start out with a real aggressive presentation and I even though I don't think the fish will necessarily bite it like a spoon or something a lot a lot of times oh he's in there a lot of times they'll come in and look at it and I'll know they're there once I see them on my electronics I can change my presentation to catch them but if I fish for a half hour I don't see anything go to an aggressive presentation don't see any fish even come in and looking then I know it's time to pick up and move and I can go another place set up and jig until I at least see some fish then if I don't catch the fish I can change my presentation but, you know it doesn't do any good to just keep changing presentations if you don't even know if fish are there you may be in a spot that's just devoid of fish you know the best angler in the world and the best presentation won't catch fish when nothing's there there we go but we know there's fish here because I'm seeing them on my electronics I'm able to change my presentation and there we go and here we go and here's another one just right there okay What's it? And away he goes down the hole and all by himself. Well, I'll tell you what, it's been a great day out here. We accomplished what we want to accomplish. Let me kind of review what we did 
and then I'm gonna go home and uh, at a reasonable hour, we caught a lot of fish and have some fun. Now, let's get the equipment up here we we're using and tell you a little bit about them. We started the day, we used our Lowrance uh, H2, uh, H2O color unit with mapping. We had some pre-positioned waypoints in here that we used that we had scouted out in the summer, knew there was a rocky area in this flat that would hold fish. So we used our handheld Lowrance GPS to take us to that spot. That spot hadn't produced. We'd have used our electronics and done some searching. It turned out we caught fish in that spot. Our scouting paid off. While we were fishing, we used our Lowrance M68 with a mapping unit, sonar, and uh, it also had a sonar on it. We could have used the sonar on this. We could have put those positions in it. You know, my partner in Minnesota, Greg Claggio, has a bracket on his snowmobile that he uses his handheld, takes him right to humps. He puts preloaded lake maps in and uses the, the contour lines right on his unit. We could have loaded those waypoints into here and used this as our GPS because it has mapping in it too. In fact, while we were out, we could have saved a waypoint by just pushing this and saving it if we were in a place we hadn't saved before. Used our electronics to show us what our lure was doing, the depth and the activity of the fish, and hopefully showed you a little bit about how to use these to enhance your ice fishing. You know, with the modern tools we have today, it's so much easier to be a successful ice fisherman. Uh, whether you use a GPS or a depth finder is entirely up to you. I mean, get out and ice fish. It's a lot of fun. But fishing with electronics, ice fishing with electronics, if, well, at least double, if not triple the amount of fish you catch. And a good GPS will help you save those key locations, share them with your friends, and get back out to them. Go to your local store, take a look at these. Go to Lawrence.com, check them out. Join us next week on Mountain States Fishing. While I'm doing that, let me show you some of the other screens we have on here while we're fishing. Now you saw the map screen before, but let's go, you go to pages on this unit, and let's pick split screen. This is, gives us a split screen, we'll put enter. Now what we have here, still my lure. This is top to bottom. This is like the bottom five to 10 feet. It's a close up. For years, I didn't fish with this kind of a screen. I fished with a flasher. A lot of guys ice fishing still prefer a flasher, like the old Vexlar units and things I used to use. But if you really are set on a flasher, you can do that with this unit too. Go to page, and we go all the way down here, and hit flasher, and hit enter. Now we've got a flasher. For those of you who fish with a flasher, here's how a flasher works. Top is up here, you go around the screen, and this is bottom, right there. Right there is my lure. I just kind of lost it there. And you'll see, as I move my lure, you see how it comes around and up closer? So what's happening, that blue line that's moving up and down is my lure. The difference between a flasher is flasher is a little quicker. It shows the movement really instantaneously. So you see the movement. When you move your rod, that lure moves.